I absolutely love the Nintendo Switch. I've been a huge Nintendo fanboy forever, and if you're like me and have hands, then you'll know it's not the most comfortable to play, handheld at least, for extended periods of time. I know a lot of people play docked, but I actually play handheld probably 75% of the time because I just love handhelds. So using my Switch laying in bed always gives me pins and needles, and come to think of it, I always seem to be laying down whilst playing my Switch. Don't know why, but anyway, after a while, it feels like someone else's hands are actually playing the game and not mine. So I thought, no more. Since the internet watches your every move, I started seeing adverts on Facebook and just all around the place advertising the Skull & Co grip case. The Skull logo kind of caught me and I was intrigued. I put it off for a while, but then I decided to get one when it was on offer. This isn't sponsored, by the way. I bought this from Amazon for myself. So right now they're about 16 pounds, so not too bad fairly inexpensive way around an annoying problem for me at least. So today I'll be giving you my honest opinion on the Skull & Co case. It's definitely not perfect but it does work and it is certainly more comfortable than without it. So if you're new here, then smash that like and subscribe button because as a small channel, it really does help us out. And if you'd like to support us further, then please check out our Patreon link down below. And there you can get access to our private Discord server where we talk about games and everything. Christina and I are there all the time. And there is already a fair few people from our streaming days in there as well. The Skull & Co case started on Kickstarter a few years back and now you can find it online pretty easily. It's basically just a complete cover for your entire Switch with interchangeable grips on the back. You can purchase it for either the Switch or the Switch Lite as is, or you can get it with a big case enough to fit it all in as well. I just got the sort of grip case itself, but even this comes with three grip styles for all hand sizes. The case itself is a pretty thin TPU material, so it's fairly flexible and resistant to grease at the same time. For the price, I'm quite impressed with the build quality. It feels sturdy enough, has a nice gloss logo on the back, and all the vents and ports are cut out without any rough edges either, and it looks pretty good. The grips are different. They're a hard plastic with little circle grips, and they come in different colors to match the colors of your Joy-Cons. I myself just went with the grays because I've got gray Joy-Cons and they look great. However, if you are a perfectionist like me, then I'd advise not getting the colored versions because apparently they don't match the Joy-Cons color 100%. I've read so many consumer reviews online where people just say the color's not quite there. You get three grips, a small, medium, and larger style. I myself use the chunky ones that have a bit of a slope to rest your finger on. The smaller ones don't have this at all, but the other ones almost have kind of like a ledge to rest your middle fingers on. The ones I use cause the switch to sort of lie at a strange angle when you lay it down, so the charging port faces up and it's kind of annoying. So recently I have switched to the ledged ones because this actually sits flat when the switch is laying down on the table. Changing the grips out is actually really easy. On the inside of the case, just pinch the two latches and they just ping straight off. Get the new grip and just push it in firmly. It secures really well and they don't feel loose even after months of use as well, which is actually a really good sign. Installing the case is easy. Put the top of your switch in first and then press the base in. Again, it's super sturdy. The switch isn't loose inside there at all and it is a really good fit. You need to put the top in first because the case actually covers the triggers and bumpers as the case has its own to protect them. This isn't something I'm massively keen on because the triggers and bumper covers make them feel a little bit spongy and you do need to press them sort of quite a bit harder to actuate them. I've gotten used to it over time, but at first it's definitely annoying. Another annoyance is the case covers the volume and power buttons. So pressing the volume down button can sometimes press the power button at the same time, turning your switch off and this sucks massively. The cutouts for the ports and vents are great, but the headphone jack cutout isn't actually that big. So some headphones might not completely connect Luckily, it is still very easy to change the game carts out though. Another thing is there's no cutout for the kickstand, so this is handheld only. Comfort wise, it's actually pretty good, but it could be better. So for me, it's instantly more comfortable than holding the Switch normally without a case. It's much more like holding a normal controller and it gives you more support over the console in general. Without the case, I end up actually putting my little fingers underneath the Switch to kind of support it in my hands. And this is annoying over time because it adds to those pins and needles. And with the case, there's no need to do this at all. 
It does force your thumbs to be at a strange angle when using the sticks or the sort of D-pad buttons though, and that's why I think this could be better. The grips almost go straight down. They don't angle out at all, and this forces your thumbs to sort of stretch round at a funny angle a little bit. If the grips were angled out, then not only would it be more comfortable, but it would stop this thumb nonsense at the same time. So for example, the Satisfy Grips, which is another company's sort of alternative, looks like the perfect angle in my opinion, but I haven't actually used them, but stay tuned until the end of the video. So since the Skull & Co grip case does cover the entire switch, other than the screen of course, then you do get a little bit more protection. So there's less risk of you scuffing the base, the top, the front edges, or the back of it. So that is an added bonus as well. One thing Skull & Co used to advertise was that this case is thin enough to be kept on whilst using the switch dock. Just don't do this. Do not do this, warning signs, red alert, don't just, just don't do this at all. I've seen so many scratch screens online from people just, you know, jamming it into their docks and uh, I just, uh, it, it really irritates me. I can't, can't deal with that. So just don't do it. If you do take the case off to dock your switch, then make sure you lay the case face down with the grips facing up. Otherwise, over time, that pliable plastic will stretch and bend, which might lead it to not fitting your switch correctly. Another thing to mention is unless you buy their specific case or the bundle, you'll have to throw this in your bag loose as it won't fit into a standard switch case. So let's do a roundup of all the positive things that are really good about this case, in my opinion, at least. So accessible entry price is brilliant. It's actually quite a good build quality. It's comfortable, well, more so than not using it at all. Easy to adjust those grips, and there's multiple included, so there's something for everyone. It does look great. I really do like that Skull logo. It fits well, and it's easy to remove as well. All ports and vents are accessible, but there is no kickstand cutout. Switch and Switch Lite versions are available, and cases are available to fit the whole thing as well. Now, some things I wasn't so keen on about the Skull & Co grip case. The grips don't flare out, so they go straight down, which causes your thumbs to be at a strange angle. The colors don't match 100%, which would definitely bug me if I bought a colored version. Do not dock it. It's going to scratch your screen. Just don't do it. Changing the volume can sometimes press the power button. Triggers, bumpers are slightly spongy and it won't fit into normal cases. Now there is one thing I really want to quickly mention is when you're using the dock, if you are having sort of concerns about scratching the screen, even without this on, then let me know down in the comments because I can show you the switch dock hack trick that I came up with myself that stops this from happening. So let me know down in the comments. All right, so overall, despite the fair number of cons I actually like this grip case. It could be better, but honestly, for £16 entry price, it does a pretty good job. But personally, I would definitely like to try out the Satisfy Zen Grip Pro that looks far more comfortable and it doesn't cover the triggers, bumpers, or anything else. It's basically literally just a handle that clips onto the back. But there is a catch. In the US, it's around $30 new or $20 on sale right now and even less if you have an extra discount code. But here in the UK, it's almost 50 quid. That's almost $70 and that's absolutely mental. So for the benefit of you guys, I've actually imported a Satisfy Zen Grip Pro for $18 last night, of course, plus shipping, but still way cheaper than the UK. That way I can test out and see if the claims are true. And I can tell you the differences between these grips and the Satisfy ones. So make sure to smash that subscribe button so you don't miss that video. So if you're on the fence, laying on the floor with pins and needles and you see the Skull & Co grip on offer, then I would say grab it. It's pretty good, but it's not without its flaws. Do you use a grip for your Nintendo Switch? Let us know down in the comments. Of course, if you've enjoyed this video, then please support us by smashing that like and subscribe button because it really helps us out. Now, last thing before I forget, because I forgot on the last video, huge shout out to our patrons, Majo and Temperus. Woo! Thank you so much for the extra support over on Patreon. So uh, big love to you guys. Thank you so much. And anyone else, go check it down there because you can join our Discord as well when you sign up on Patreon. Anyway, this is me. Merry Christmas, everybody. This may be our last video until next year, 2021. And if so, thank you so much for supporting us throughout 2020. It's been amazing. I know we've only just picked up the pace towards the end of the year, but we're going to start 2021 strong for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, this is Dubov, Dubog, yeah! See you later, guys. Thanks for tuning in.